Hey, Raiders, this is Ron Haid. Hope you guys are having a fantastic holiday season and Happy New Year. It's been a while since we had a video. All the market has done is essentially just keep going higher. And frankly, you don't need me to tell you that. <laughs> so before we get into the first video of the new year, let's do the disclaimer that everything is always for educational purposes only and is not advised to buy or sell anything. All right, I have a daily chart of the S&P 500 ETF, the spiders on my screen. We're using Thinkorswim. I'm going to go ahead. Actually, before I zoom in, let's look at the Corona crash. Corona crash. Now we have the Corona rally. And if we go ahead and zoom in here, we can see we were up in the last trading day of this past year, which would have been Thursday. We're still staying above the red line, which is the 20 day EMA and the orange, which is the 50, the five zero day institutional moving average. We're above both. So whether you follow a shorter term moving average like the 20 day EMA, we're bullish. You follow the longer term, the 50 day in orange. We're also bullish here. The outlook for this week is bullish. The outlook for every day after today is still bullish until we start cracking some of these moving averages. The big one for me is going to be the orange. Now, you could say, well, the last time I broke the orange line here, it didn't work, and here it didn't work. This is true if we use it on the broad index. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. Nothing works every single time. Previously, we've had touches and bounces, get near it and bounce, get near it and bounce, hit our head, can't get through, can't get through. And then once we got above the 50 day back in April of this past year, it was a really nice ride, right? And even before then, we bounced off of it and kept going higher. And then once we broke it down, you know, the floodgates opened. So we don't know what a break a breach on a closing basis of the 50 day is going to bring. Could it bring another false move? It sure could. We have to wait and see. So if we break the, let's start here with the red line. All that is, is a little yellow flag. We break the orange on the S&P 500. That's a huge red flag. Technically, the bulls have lost their edge and the bears now have the advantage. At that point, when one day that will happen, whether we're at the S&P at 357 or if it's at 35,000 <laughs> at this rate, I want to come back down and watch these lows because if these lows get blown out, we take them out, then the next major support, there's a little bit of support here around 300, and then we start coming all the way back down into here. Not saying we're going to go there, not saying we'll ever go there, but that's what we want to watch for. So the fact that I, I'm not doing these videos daily or even weekly right now just because the market just keeps melting higher, there's not much to talk about. Now, that's the S&P. Let's go take a look at the Dow via the diamonds. Similar situation. We're sitting here at all-time highs. If I zoom in here on the daily chart, we're above the red, we're above the orange, above the 20, above the 50. If the 50-day falls on a closing basis, we would come right back down to these lows. Now, interestingly, on the Dow, in October, early November, we took out the previous low, and it acted as a shake the lemmings from the tree, and then up we go, you know, and we moved up pretty nicely. There hasn't been a lot of headway since maybe the middle of November. It's been barely higher, but there was, once we dip below there, there was a quick thrust right back to the upside. Let's take a look at the Qs. The Qs, pretty much at all-time highs near them. Same thing. We bounced off the 20, bounced off the 20, bounced off the 20, bounced off the 20. So for half of November, all of December, month and a half, we can't even get below the 20-day. That would be the first sign of trouble, then go to the orange. We break the orange, which is our institutional moving average. Then we would come right back down to this low, which is about, what, 269 or so. If I take a look at the Russell 2000, it's powering higher now very, very nicely. It broke out in the middle of November. It's pretty much been straight up. Watch the 20, watch the 50. We break the 50. There's a gap fill right there. Then we come back down into this area. I'm getting a lot of questions on bonds, gold, the dollar. We'll hit all three here. TLT just keeps drifting lower. I'd want to see a close above the orange line. But not just one day like we saw back here on November 20th, because that was a fake out. I'd want to see two days. Two days above the 50-day, then we could maybe think it's a, a more of a confirmed breakout, if you will. How about the dollar, UUP? It, too, just keeps drifting lower. So if the dollar is moving lower, the euro right now is pushing higher. Taking a look at gold, gold is entering its seasonally bullish window. We've stayed a couple days now above the 50-day. This previous basically two-day swing high would be the initial target if you're just looking for something on the chart, and then it's back up here 
ended up to the 190 area. Purely technical, not saying it's going to go there. Those would be the targets. If gold would roll over and the whole market becomes really wonky, everything becomes wonky in the month of January, which is always possible. Although there is usually a seasonal bias overall to stocks. Um, but if anything were to happen, which hits the S&P or hits gold, the moment we go back below the 50-day, that is the sign of, hey, something might not be right here and we might start rolling over. But gold is starting to pop higher in its in its uh, usual window. Um, taking a look at other stocks I get asked a lot about, Tesla. When Tesla did its five for one stock split, it was around 500. Then it went down to three mid threes. Now we're at seven. This thing's up over 50% from the stock split area, ballpark. It's insane, but the same thing here, no matter what the stock is, gold, bonds, the S&P 500, Tesla, and if it was coffee, we get below the red, that's the first sign of trouble. Now, if you like using an eight day EMA, well, it's gonna be a little closer. I'm using the 20 day. Maybe you like a 21 and it's an SMA versus an EMA. It doesn't really matter. Whatever moving average you wanna use in the short term, that's fine. I like a 20 day EMA, it's about a month's worth of data. And the fact that it's an exponential moving average gives the heaviest weighting of that 20 day formula to the most recent price action, which is the most pertinent in this case. I don't care what happened as much 20 days ago than I do what happened. The last trading day. That's why EMAs are typically preferred in the shorter term. When you get something like 50 days, an SMA is fine. There's so many data points. EMA, SMA, there's not much difference. And from an institutional perspective, I like the SMA better. So anyway, back to Tesla. First sign of trouble below the red, that would be a yellow flag. Short term bullish trades I'd consider a problem for me. And then the target would be down to the 50, break to 50. Then you go back down to the breakout point, which is where the gap was right before Thanksgiving. Apple. Some folks are going to say it looks like a double top, but they love to poo poo Apple sometimes. Apple remains one of the best stocks, I think, possibly out there for long term. Does that mean it's going to go higher tomorrow? The answer is no. We do have a double top pattern right now. And that's it. But it's still bullish on the daily chart because we're above the red line. We're above the orange line. We get back below the red, yellow flag. Below orange, red flag. Bears get the edge. And then we go back down here to swing lows. So short term, yeah, Apple is not in the best technically bullish picture because you do have what looks like a double top there. Volume is picking up a little bit. It's not the end of the world. Where I would get very concerned on Apple, and it doesn't mean it's not going to go higher after this point. It would be taking out one, two, and three lows. We take out all these swing lows. Then we go from, remember, a trading range also can be a double top pattern. Here's a top. There's a top. Okay, now our bottom of our range is going to be eh, mid-100s. It's not perfect, but we could get down to 105, go into 107. This is now a trading range. We break out. That's super bullish. So anything basically above about 140, super bullish technically. Otherwise, the range is all the way down the low ones. We get below there, then we go gap fill. And that little one-day move there is not necessarily a swing low. So I would, say, I would say gap fill, the next support level, yeah, you guessed it, way the heck down here. Not saying it's going to get there, but that would be the target, the big target. All right, Amazon. With everybody buying online, being stuck at home, sideways action. It is still a monster trading range after such a huge move from 1600 to 3500, a 100% stock move in about what? Four, nine, five, six months. This consolidation is not a problem at all if I'm a bull. It's just catching its breath, biding its time, seeing where the earnings are going to be. And remember, we have earnings in about two weeks. We enter earnings season. Uh, Netflix. Typically a stock that starts doing well in January. So far, it's starting to perk up a little bit. The breakout here on Netflix would be above this double top, around 568 or so, give or take a few bucks. We get above there, that's a clean breakout. That would also be very, very bullish. Right now, it's trading range with a short-term upward bias. All right, we did gold. I had a question on oil. Um, if I zoom in on USO, which is not all oil, since it's gotten above its 50-day in March as well. I'm sorry, above its 50 and 20. 20 day on something like USO would be below the 20 day in red would be a yellow flag. And then your target is the orange flag. If we take a look at the VIX, I forgot to look at this one. The VIX is down in the low 20s. Historically, this is still really, really low. Was it low from the pre-corona? The answer is no. Now, there we were in the mid-teens. 
this is still very, very low. There is no sign that there is a buildup of pressure in the VIX or it's starting to rise. That can be problematic for the broad market. Right now, the VIX is, is bearish, which is bullish for the SPY. So with that, we'll just cover those couple stocks and we'll just leave it there. The bulls have the edge in the broad market. Everything is still rosy. Whether or not the next speed bump comes next week, this week, or next month, you know what to watch for. First sign of trouble is the red line. The big one is the orange line. And if that happens, of course, I'll do a video. So the next video, not sure when it's going to be. If we just keep slowly drifting higher, I'm just going to let the market alone. But, but if we start breaking down, there's some fireworks that I'll put together a video and get it out to you guys. Okay. So I wish you and your families all the very best and a wonderful 2021. I'll see you next time. Take good